at 23, I was responsible for taking her life. Never did I think when I was in the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th grade that at 23 I'd be responsible for, for taking the life of somebody. It was a Friday night, 2009, July 17th. We decided to go to the bar. I was 23 now, so I was allowed to go to the bar legally. Even though I wasn't supposed to be there because three months prior to this, I had just got a DUI. So I had no license and I was on probation. My buddies, we were all going to the bar and they said, Nathan, are you driving? And I said, oh, no, absolutely not. I don't have a license. I'm on probation. I'm not even supposed to be doing it. So I had drank and consumed a half a fifth of whiskey and 13 shots of tequila. I was drunk. A girl named Priscilla Owens, who had just moved from Alabama, she had three weeks previous to moved up to Indiana to Marion. She was from there when she was a kid. She was a little older than all of us. Priscilla shows up and she was going to be my designated driver. She was the one that was supposed to take me to start the fire. She comes to get me. My friend Mike says, Nathan, you're not driving, right? I said, oh, no. I mean, I'm, I'm drunk. I'm not driving. She is. She's been designated a driver. We got this. We're going out to TJ's. We're starting the fire. I'll see you in a little bit. Cool. We shook up and we're out the door. But in the process of leaving that bar to getting to the car, there's one question that I'm never going to probably ever have answered. And I can't quite put my finger on it. But somehow, when I left that bar, Priscilla gave me her keys. And I remember these next few moments. I remember the atmosphere. I remember what was being said. I remember everything, every part of it. I remember the, 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 the shorts that I had on. I remember more clearly than anything the next words I heard out of Priscilla's mouth. I remember them so clearly. Every vowel, every consonant articulated so precisely. And it was so clear, as crystal clear as day. Well, the next words I heard from Priscilla were simply this. Tree! And I woke up in a hospital bed. The paramedics report. It said this. It said when they arrived on scene, that there was only one person in the vehicle, me. And that I hit the tree going anywhere from 60 to 63 miles an hour. There was no brakes. I didn't even try to stop. And when I hit that tree, that case of beer bottles that was behind her, Catapulted forward at impact. And that woman named Priscilla who didn't have her seatbelt on catapulted forward at impact. And that thing called the windshield in your car. And that case of beer bottles met with Priscilla in between. And she slid down to the floorboard. And her neck rested on the middle console. So I stayed up all night that night. You know what? The, the paper had read to Lifeline in a serious accident. Took him to Parkview Hospital. Nobody would tell me if she was alive or she was dead. I had no idea, but I knew the paper said something that morning. And if she was alive or she passed away, the paper would probably say something the next morning. The paper man shows up at like 4 a.m. He comes driving by. Everything slows down like a movie. He rolls the window, he throws the paper, it hits, boom. I jump up, grab it, I rip open the rubber band, I roll it open, and there's the headline. Crash, victim, dies. At 23, I was responsible for taking her life. Never did I think when I was in the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th grade that at 23 I'd be responsible for, for taking the life of somebody. What happened though is the family wanted me to contact them right after that and I called and what do you say to that? You know, what do you say? I'm sorry. But I called and the family said, Nathan, listen, 
Priscilla was sober. It was her vehicle. We can't put all the blame on you, which I didn't agree with. I was solely to blame. I was the driver. I don't care how drunk I was. It was my fault. But they said, listen, there's no reason for two families to be destroyed. We want you to know that we, we love you, even though we don't know you. We forgive you, even though we don't know you. But do us a favor. Just try to make the world a better place. Try to don't let Priscilla die for nothing. Just make a difference. What I do, my life speaks louder than words because when I begin to change my life, I'm going to learn to make good choices. I'm going to learn to be responsible. I'm going to be dedicated. I'm going to have good characters and morals and values. I'm going to own up when wrong. I'm going to be truthful. I'm going to stand up for what I know is right, and I won't let anybody change me. And maybe that's not where you're at right now, but you can get there, and these are the attributes of success, man. If you want something in life, you got to be willing to do what nobody else has done. If you keep doing the same thing you've always done, it's the, it's the definition of insanity. If you want to change, you're going to have to be willing to change. Good choices will always have good results. And I was making a lot of bad choices and a lot of bad decisions. And I was basing my value, my worth off your opinions. And I learned something. Listen to me, everybody in here, I want you to understand something. Your value is never based off any of the opinions of anybody in this room. Who cares what anybody thinks or says about you? They are not your merit system. They are not your system of worth. You are who you say you are by your actions. But the choices and the decisions that we make have consequences, good or bad. When I went to prison, at 23, listen, I came from a broken family. I had been labeled and unmarked and identified. I had battled hurts and pains and wounds. I had suicidal thoughts and I had battled self-harming. Drugs and alcohol had consumed me. I had lost all dreams and goals. I felt like I had made too many mistakes to change. Listen, I felt like why, I had every reason to say, you know what, life is too tough and I quit. I, I live with these three principles, and I promise you, man, they will change everything about who you are. Hard work works, make good choices, good things happen, and value people. I decided 10 years ago, literally, when this all happened, and I went to prison, I wanted to be, I was like, you know what, I want to make this promise, I want to keep it to this family, I come from a lot of brokenness, I don't know where to start, but what I do know is the importance of the choices that I make, and so literally, I wrote the word, change the world, and I slapped it on my little prison prison cell window and every single day I woke up and I realized make good choices great things happen aim small miss small make good choices great things happen you see every choice that I can make listen I, I can't control what you think about me I can't control your opinion of me I can't control what you say about me but I control how I react respond and what I do with my life I'm in control of my life I don't let external factors control me I'm in control of my life because sometimes life can be tough life can be challenging and sometimes the obstacles in front of you seem like they're too big and it's easier just to lay down. But you know what I remember? I remember when my dad used to look at me when the kid said, listen, Nathan, life is never going to give you anything. But if you make it and if you build it, nobody can take it from you. Because hard work and tenacity and refusing to quit and chasing your dream, you'll get there. I promise you. Maybe you don't hit the star, but you land on the moon. You don't, don't give up and you go after it and you stop caring about the opinions of people around you. Stop blaming everybody from your hurts. Take ownership of your life. Take off your mask. Don't feed the bear. Make good choices. Be a best friend. Encourage somebody. Be a voice of hope and inspiration. This is your moment.